Hello again, how is it going? It is Faker coming at you with another Legends of Runes here video. I do hope you guys have all been well. Today I'm going to be sharing with you my updated version of Soraka Tam Kench. As of patch 1.15 actually, we just uh, rolled over into a new patch. But there's only going to be a couple of real notable changes here. I'm bumping up the number of hushes and also including Solari Priestess for an upcoming seasonal tournament. I'll explain more about that in one second. Alrighty guys, so if by the end of this video you've enjoyed the content, I highly recommend you subscribe. Come check out some more of my content, it doesn't cost you a thing actually, and you can unsubscribe at any time, no surcharges. Alrighty, so before we get into the gameplay, I guess it's important to talk about some of the card changes, especially for anybody who's been watching my videos in the past and seen some of my Soraka Tam Kenship videos. Another reason to come check out some more videos, by the way. So, notable card changes is an increase in Hush for the upcoming seasonal tournament. I think Hush is going to be a fantastic tool, especially when picking bands are involved, and Hush finds good value in a lot of specific matchups. I like raising the number of Hushes. You can never have enough Hush. The card is actually are very powerful at the moment. But more notably, I want to talk about Solari Priestess and why I'm including it at the moment and only as a two of, uh, because deck space is quite tight. This is the reason I have two. If I could, I would have more and I'd have more Bastions too, but we can't. We have to sacrifice and work with what we can. But I do think Solari Priestess is a really interesting tech card and the tools it provides is pretty unmatched. Even in decks that don't have pure synergy with the card itself, I believe the card is very powerful especially in this list. Now, we have the ability to find two of the most common cards I'm aiming for is Falling Comet, which is going to be fantastic in the mirror, and it's going to be a very powerful tech card. And besides that, Written in the Stars gives us the ability to pretty much turn Solari Priestess into another champion card, which is really important because finding Tarm Kenj and Soraka are some of the most important cards for this deck, and if we don't find them, it really sucks. Now, double drawing Tarm Kench is nothing special. It can have some pretty rare niche value, but uh, finding double Soraka can actually sometimes be a game breaker. I think Solari Priestess is going to be fantastic in the mirror matchup, and that's my plan for it. Yet to see full potential and a really big sample size, but I'm one to truly believe that I think Solari Priestess is a great inclusion. And against some of the uh, Soraka Tam Kench's unfavorable matchups, it doesn't really provide anything more special. But the idea here is that I'm making Solari Priestess fit into this deck, so against the matchups that I can beat, I can beat even harder. Enjoy the games here today. I'll see you soon. So we will try to win this matchup through Star Spring. Actually, is the fact that he's running an Anivia version make this matchup a lot better for us? It, I think it does, doesn't it? Because these Anivias can't really push a lot of damage. The only issue is going to be the Ruinations. So once I stick the Star Spring, I guess we'll just slowly win the game, right? I just should never overextend. Always make sure I have ways of healing any unit that's damaged, and we should be fine. I don't see why we can't win. I could even play double star spring. Okay, going along with the not overextending play, I think I'll just take my open attack. And then hopefully he plays something. Aristocrat. <laughs> Osu can sniff out any star anywhere. I'll make his avalanche really bad. So now we can't really play avalanche, right? We play grasp of the undying. Oh, you can't play this avalanche. That has to be avalanche. He's like, oh, he, sna he snapped it. He snapped it. And he just doesn't play it and they heal anyway. <laughs> um. Okay, what can we do here to make sure we don't overextend? I think playing Fortune Croak is a reasonable play onto the 2-4. Um, double spring is nice, but it's not doing anything right now, so let's pass. 
This is just a healing simulator? You might be right. You might be right. Pablo's been down, but his knee out! Ah, I told your ancestors to protect! That's a good draw. I hope he plays something else. Ma man. I feel better when you feel better. Bring the foot and bell. Round him up. We want to probably attack in a way that makes his avalanche a lot worse. Actually, I could probably just like leave, I don't know, maybe I'll grab these ones. I think I'll grab the 1-1 one -one spider. Yeah, I, I, I'm glad I, um, I am glad I got the Diana remote. I like the Diana remote. I know Faint has it. I don't know why I never picked it up to now. I guess I wasn't as excited about it until now, but I think um, I really like the Diana remote. It's very, it's very sophisticated. I like it. It's chill. Um, do I ever play around? No, I think as I said earlier, I'm not going to overextend. I'll take my pass here. The Star Spring is just getting us there. You can't even play Ruination this turn. I don't think I need to play Double Star Spring, even though it, it is kind of cool. I just need to make sure I, yeah, have enough resources to make it to the late game. We should be fine to play Fortune Croco over something this turn. I need to go to the restroom. I've been banking up time for this. I also turned the air conditioner off because it's kind of, um, kind of hot now. Um, maybe I threaten. Okay, I'm gonna actually play box the puss here. I'm gonna play box the puss so I can threaten another wing condition. I'm threatening another wing condition because I can challenge these spiders and swing face with the Star Shepherd. Best thing for opponent would be double avalanche. A storm approaches. True. I wasn't even thinking about that. For my homeland. Imagine not thinking about that. That's what, why is he swinging here? Holy shit. I love this. I'm so happy about this. Um, yeah, we'll do this. I feel better when you feel better. <sighs> Bladder may explode if you continue this. I know. You go into a rest room, will be banked time. So. Bathroom saves lives. Yep. Oh, I know why. He, wait, I know why you played a Nivea now. I don't know why he swung, but I know why you played a Nivea. Okay. Wait, what's the best way to do this? I can't think. I can't think. Yeah, it's the best way to do it. I need to... So I grant... I grant challenger to that. One. Two. Three. 
Look at the size of this Star Shepherd. He better not be planning on using... Um, if he's going to use like Grass for the Undying here, there's the potential to uh, kill him. <laughs> It has to be hey, vengeance, boss, right? Alright, he surrendered! I'm going to the restroom! God damn it, thank you for the fight! When I try Anivia decks without SI, I lose a lot till I get the deck to a good point. Makes sense, I mean Anivia with SI is probably what's considered staple. Unload the Toad? Of course. I don't even know if I want to keep Krusty Codger. I think it's more important that I hard mulligan looking for Tom Kench and Soraka. That felt like a correct mulligan to me. And it turns out we have a fantastic curve, so GG. We have a lot of time to bounce back, so no worries, yeah. I think I'll play a bit off stream today. Um, I start work pretty late tomorrow, so I'm going to take a bit of time to uh, play off stream and kind of sweat it out a little bit. Do I, end, do I end the round on my opponent here? Uh, I don't think so, right? I don't think it really matters. Hello, it's my M Maven? How you going, man? Off stream hype? You know it, man. I love that, that, that real quiet gameplay. You know what I mean? Like where you just sit there... Like, it's a totally different experience. Like, it's just general card game gaming. I'm doing something now? My man. What I'll do this turn is I will just open attack, first of all. And save mana if possible. Not having Star Spring is a little bit unfortunate, but that's not always, that's not the only way we can win this matchup. Star Spring helps against the Gohard itself, but against the rest of the deck, it's mostly going to be Tom Kench that gets us the dub. So I'm going to pass here. I'm going to save my mana, and we could have a lot of reasons for doing that. Now we have access, access to Hush. It's pretty cool, I guess. Just an open attack. I think we always take this block. I mean, I'm curious as to why uh, he's just open attacking here. He's not developing. Alright. Maybe he has a hand f uh, of heavy removal. So he probably has like, maybe like Vengeance. Vengeance Rumination. That's like that, maybe. There's a few different variants of Gohard decks. So you don't really know what to play around some of the time. Sometimes the decks run no ruination, sometimes they run ruination. Sometimes they run crumble, sometimes they don't. Ooh, Priestess. That's cool. Yes, Arcanus. This Monotargon deck seems weird, I know, right? What decks do you recommend for control style? Um, Anivia. Anivia is an option. Not control style though, hang on. You've got a few options out there actually. He's taking a slow turn. Oh, he's running pick a card. That's a cool card to run. Wait, is he? No, he wouldn't be playing my list. No, because I don't run GP. My old list, I mean. There's, is there any reason for me to actually ever consider playing the Acquired Taste here? On a, a Furball unit. I think I need to draw cards, right? Let's just play this first. My are getting cold. 
written in the stars should be the play. We'll burst past here too. Um, we were playing Monotargon by the way, but we uh, unfortunately didn't find much success. So I ultimately decided that for the sake of my uh, LP, I would uh, take a quick breather from that. So what's in store for me? I guess he wants to play that now so he can deny the healing. Lucka. I, I do hope so, Lucka. That would be cool. I think um the 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 point of playing Mono Targon is to play the Mountain Scryer. But sometimes it just feels a little bit too slow. The stats are really poor. I think that card can afford to be a 3-3, three -three, if I'm being honest, but it goes alongside with the other cards though. In terms of like the invoking cards have terrible stat lines. But um, you know. Yeah, it, it it's maybe just playing pure mono targon is a bit of a troll. I find it really funny that I can't actually um punish the GP at the moment. I guess I'll play Soraka here. Maybe I should eat the keg. <laughs> should I eat the keg? Eat the keg? Alright guys. I'm gonna eat the keg. No, I'm not. I'm gonna play Soraka. Wait. I'm not sure because... Yeah, now we'll play... I want to play something that can actually block the GP. There may be redemption for you yet. Is he actually passing here? I love it. I love it. I'm so happy. Eat the keg. Room Yum. Dude, Tom Kench will eat anything, literally, right? Let him play out. Now he's attacking. He can't do anything on the stack, right? We're fine. We lost a pool shark and some other ch cheap card, right? So we can do shakedown. Boom. Boom. We can heal. This. We look after our own. You can go like this. Go, this bomb. This is the way. All right, back in top 700, decent start. Good work, Faint. Make sure to hang around there until the end of the season. Soraka with the big butt. Soraka is thick. I agree. I just noticed that they added a way to check players' LP. If you have them on your friends list, you can check their profile. Like a different kind of thing? Hey, lover of pies. How are you going, buddy? Wait, are we referring to what we can already see? Or is there another new thing? Is that what you're saying? It is a go hard deck, right? I am facing a go hard deck, right? Check after this game. Okay, I'll have a quick keys. So I'm going to play Written in the Stars to thin out my deck. Went from 0 LP to 114. Fantastic job, Lover of Pies. I've gone from 300 to 140. 60. Um, let's Written. We need to start cycling the deck, don't we? Yeah, I'm aware of the... Oh, yeah, no, I've seen the profile. 
I've seen the profile thing. I think I know what you're talking about, but I thought for a moment you may have been talking about something I wasn't as aware of. Oh, I don't require many. So I'm pretty cool with seeing potential ruinations here. Like I've got the perfect refill. I've worked up something special. I can a bay play, right? Draw some cards. Could still be ruination, sure. I can deal with that. I haven't played much, so I was unaware. Unaware of... Oh. I hope it's Ruination. As soon as he commits mana into Ruination, I'm bowling. I do lose my Soraka, though. Oops, sorry about that. Uh... Could potentially flip Soraka here. I mean, if it was if it was Ruination, I doubt my opponent opens up with deck hand because I can play the Bayou Branch. I mean, I guess he could play Twist of Fate here. I'm gonna devour the keg. I think the kegs are more threatening than the units themselves. You can, um, withering. Eh. Maybe I shouldn't have done that. I could hush it. Do I really want to hush the keg? I could also hush, you know, Commander Lidros. Uh, I'll hush the keg, guys. I have one more hush in the deck. Maybe I need to put a third hush into this deck. That's probably going to be correct. Oh, man. Is this guy mad? My comestibles are getting cold. Let's just um, flip the Kench so he doesn't get all the kegs back. <laughs> I mean, what do we get? A spider and a keg. I will gladly guide all. <laughs> I want to deny him that value. Too much value for him to have. Possibilities are infinite, guys. Clear off. Yeah, third hush. This deck probably needs a third hush. Is it good in the mirror? You can hush their um, astral protection, you can hush their pails, you can hush. Um, any buffs on Tom Kench? Yeah, third hush might be good. Not all of us are immortal. What do I cut for the third hush? It might be brought back protector. 
even though it's really good against aggro for the tournament that might be a trimmable card yeah it might be the play it wouldn't make much sense to cut anything else it's kind of I guess I'll guiding touch here Wow, imagine um not drawing Star Spring. <laughs> it happens. Well I have I can get rid of this, right? Star I'll clear a path for you. Good to see you too. Sometimes go hard isn't actually the best. I guess I'll float the mana here. I'm guessing he's going to play Vengeance here. However, I have the Bastion, so that's really good for us. You had your chance to walk away. I wish I could play more Bastions in this deck, but it's like impossible to fit it in. I mean, what else would he be considering playing here? I mean, the GP could just be bait, right? He opens up with GP because he wants to play Vengeance against the Tom Kench after I swallow it. Because he expects me to use my acquired taste on the GP. And I guess he wants to end the turn now. Do I take it? I always take their passes, right? I can't really develop any pressure here. I can draw through my deck, wasting a resource like Pale Cascade. Got 20 cards left. I think I'm going to play Pale Cascade here. I don't think Pale Cascade's going to do a tremendous amount in this matchup. We just grind them out. Yeah, of course. We have to play around the potential for there to be multiple copies of Ruination though, Vengeance, etc. It's going to be quite a long one, but we'll play it out. I'm sure there's something for my tastes. Uh, we definitely don't want to shuffle cards back into my deck. I kind of want him to see him just play like Ruination or something. The awkward thing is I can't attack because I'm going to overdraw. So I have to open up with the acquired taste. Or alternatively, I can go like Krusty. Krusty's just fine as well. It's my cheapest play. But if I don't attack with this, he's going to get the GP back. So it's an awkward position where he can potentially play Ruination now. But at the same time, my open attack is not good and I really need the card draw. So I think I'd rather just give him back the GP so I can get some card draw. Of course, I'd be disappointed to see Ruin. Like, if it doesn't play Ruination right now, he obviously doesn't have it because I can't think of a better time to play Ruination. Holy shit. He truly doesn't have it. I would assume he doesn't run Ruination in his deck then. I need to start pressuring him, maybe. Yeah. I can be patient. 
This is fun. Sometimes you yeah, just want to explode into a thousand sparkle bits. Resist the urge, I say, for sometimes the urge to combat combat bust into stardust comes from the same part of the brain that sells that calls for action or creativity. So the next time you feel the urge to detonate your brain matter across the cosmos, harness that feeling, use the energy, and as always, fuck the British. Okay. <laughs> Glad to hear that, man. Thank you for sharing that amazing story. I honestly don't know what to say. My man, Prickly Brisk Biscuit coming in with the knowledge. Oh wait, am I overdrawing? Oh fuck. Oh, I don't require menu. That's fine. I didn't need that card anyway, although it can get us get us a tremendous amount of value. Oh, that's a misplay, by the way. Oh, yeah, I misplayed. Let me count that up there. 77 misplays in total over the course of the year. Or well, at least the ones I haven't counted. Whenever we started counting them. It's actually not as high as I would have thought. Is that a top deck ruination? My oh, man. That must be the first Gohard he's found. Wow, 16 cards left. No Star Spring yet. Where's your Star Spring, Sag? I know. I am, um. It's crazy. So the rest of our deck is like three of our Astral Protections and just all of our Monka S. Alright, so I guess I have to fucking... I just need to start eating stuff until I win the game. And then somehow we need to play around also the Glimpse Beyond. Don't know this guy's gonna have in his hand of so many cards. I'm just gonna keep eating his stuff, that's all I can do. He doesn't want to play the game with me. This is a quite an obvious glimpse. Yeah, it's fine. It's fine. I'm gonna heal up the Broadback Protector here, if possible. I couldn't afford to open attack because I would overdraw a card. I'm gonna heal the Broadback Protector if possible. I don't think I'm even gonna use Shakedown yet. I mean, I could. I do enjoy prospecting. Where are you, spirit? Let us reconnoiter. My comestibles are getting cold. I guess I can use one shakedown. Time to smirk. Yeah, you see, see, like, I wanted to save all my resources for Star Spring. And we found Star Spring. 
Oh, this guy plays Crumble, by the way. I totally forgot. With the amount of cards he hasn't played, maybe this guy's playing Crumble. Holy shit. And we, he probably has like three Crumbles in his hand and he kept them all to outplay my Star Spring, but I never drew it. He has to be a Crumble deck. He's got so many cards in his hand. He's like, maybe I just won't even play Crumble. Maybe I won't even play Star Spring. <laughs> and I just won't give him away to fucking... Yeah, that could be it. Soak it in. <laughs> That's probably straight up trolling. I'm still going to play Crumble. And I'll at least... Threaten... That Wincon. I mean... Crumble's... What is it? Five mana? Yeah, he's thinking about it. He's thinking about playing Crumble, right? I have consulted the stars and they are Yo, what's up, I'm full. What's up, Gage? Do I just play Wish now? How much healing is that? Not a lot. Yeah, fuck it, I'll play it. It's 10? You guys are mathematical geniuses. I'm not looking to win the game on the spot. I just want to see how much that does. I mean, shoving multiple wishes back into my deck isn't that bad. But if he plays Ruination soon, that's going to be a little bit spooky, right? Looks like he's going to flip... Twist of Fate. Uh oh. Yeah, go hard your own unit. I see you're using Soraka Fountain. If you can't beat him, join him. Hey, my man, how do you even know about this deck? What do I eat here? I'm gonna eat one of my teammates. Which one's buffed? One of these is buffed, I'm pretty sure. Or did I already play the buffed one? I think it's the left one. So I drew something from... um. I drew something from... We played it so long ago, I've forgotten. Uh, written in the stars. This probably will be the left one. Wait. Yeah. Have something eat Kench. You know what? This is <laughs> that's actually really interesting, James. I saw you losing the gauntlet. Yeah. I mean I've played this deck before, Gage, but um it's not something I play very often. Wait, where the fuck did my Soraka go? Wait. Oh, I have to attack. Oh, okay. Cool. <laughs> Wait, for some reason I thought... Okay, so it's... Oh, dude, that's so stupid. I've never found myself in a situation. So... Yeah, yeah, okay. So I'm used to doing it to make Tarn Kench flip. So I just assume every time you actually eat someone, it, uh... Yeah, that's crazy. I'm so Pepega. <laughs> I just assume every time you eat someone, it causes them to flip. But that's not the case. Uh, you know what? If he ruinates me, I think getting my Soraka back is fantastic. I guess I'll just keep passing until he plays um, Go Get It. Pack your bags. Cool, now he's damaged my Nexus. I'm going to play Broadback here. Wait, should I eat the Twist of Fate first? Yes, I think I will. I'll eat the Twist of Fate before he flips it. Fantastic. 
Wait, do I want him to kill this? No, we don't. <laughs> why, why are you surrendering? This game is far from over, dude. Wait, I actually thought about... Um, I actually thought about... I actually thought about letting him vengeance to Tom Kench so I can get my Soraka back. <laughs> I should have thought about that. <laughs> oh man, I thought we were still I thought we were still playing, dude. That was exhausting. <laughs>